We are live and recording. So, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Alex Chisel, your host today, along with nourished uh, Melissa Snover, CEO and founder that you can see right there on your screens. Um, thank you for joining us today. I'm from the Festival of Enterprise, also a fellow business owner, and I know a lot of what uh, Melissa is going to talk about initially in her presentation is going to be relevant for you um, if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, etc. Um, so. She's also going to hang around for Q&A. We've got some questions already. Easiest way for Melissa to see them is if you pop them in the chat box um, that a number of you have been um, saying hi. So hi to Susie, Jane, Gordon in Chalfont, St. Giles, Sam in Sunny Solihull, um, Parissa, um, got a load of people, Tess from Warwick, Helen. Thank you all very much, Steve, for coming along today. Hope you're all safe and well and enjoying this glorious weather if you're able to get outside. So without further ado, I'm going to give Melissa a little intro. So those of you who don't know, um, as I said, uh, this webinar is called Adapting Your Business to the Crisis. Uh, Melissa is the CEO and founder of Nourished, which is the world's first truly personalized nutrition product using incredibly innovative, innovative 3D printing technology. I've seen it myself. Um, using a patented vegan encapsulation formula. So Melissa is going to cover how Nourished are only five months into their journey as a tech startup and are acclimatizing their marketing strategy, product mix and business mode to fit the current climate. Uh, been making hand sanitizer, masks, you name it. Um, they've been doing a lot uh, and they're going to demonstrate the importance of being agile as they've demonstrated themselves. Um, amending your product offering and services to meet new market trends. She's also got some super interesting um, data and behavior from the public on how to streamline your own social media campaigns. So without further ado, I am going to open up Melissa's screen to show her presentation and hand you over to her. Take it away, Melissa. Thank you so much, Alex, and thank you everyone for um, hopping on and uh, joining us today. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what our business is doing uh, to manage and to try and thrive as best we can in the current climate. So this is the agenda. I don't think there's any reason to walk through it, but I'm going to give you an intro on Nourished and then talk through everything around COVID. So this is a video about our brand, just in case you're not familiar with who we are. So there's an example in that video around what you can do remote working. Our team made that in three days, all remote working together. Huh. Um, and cool. So just an example of the things you can do um, when everybody is all focused. Um, and this is just a bit of information about Nourished. As you saw in the video, Nourished is basically using 3D technology to create a unique daily nutrition stack, which is basically inside of a gummy. It's very similar to a fruit pastel um, that is only for you. So it can be a combination of any 28 nourishments. We can make over a billion combinations and we make a unique product every three to five minutes. Um, on top of that, the benefits are around veganism. Everything is made in the UK. We have our own factory here where I am today, um, where our team are working double time. And because we make the product fresh and because it's inside of a gummy, it's got 99.5% or higher nutrient density and can be absorbed up to 70% better than traditional tablet vitamins. 
this is what it looks like. Um, and if anybody has not tried it yet, I really encourage you give it a go. There's loads of promotions right now on the website, but also if you'd like a sample, we have free samples available for anyone on the webinar. You just have to click on the contact us page on our website and we'll send you a, a, a one week supply to try for free. Awesome, thank you. No problem. And, and so the first thing I wanted to talk about was what we've done as a business immediately in order to make sure that the most important things are supported during this situation. As I mentioned, we are in Birmingham. We have 29 employees, 16 of which are working in our food factory downstairs with our 3D printers, and they're making food um, on a daily basis. As a result of us being a food business, we have the key worker and essential business status. And so uh, it's not only um, that we are allowed to continue, we, we, we actually have a responsibility to continue. Um, and so protecting our production staff and making sure that our teams are absolutely and 100% supported at every step of the way is essential for the business's continuance. As part of our COVID protocols, um, we implemented tons of support programs to help them. We gave free bikes to all of the teams so they wouldn't have to take public transport. And for those who did not wish to bike and or live too far away, uh, we provide a private transport, um, picking them up every day and bringing them home at the company's expense. We provided N95 masks for everyone on site and have daily thermo readings with a thermo gun to make sure that everyone is fit and healthy that's coming in the building and everyone is receiving free nourished and free hand sanitizer. As well as that, we've provided free groceries and food for all of the team on site for breakfast and lunch. And um, this is basically so that they don't have to go outside of the building and possibly put themselves at risk. And in addition to that, we've also started to add on uh, food for them to take home for the evenings as well for anyone that needs it. Um, we've also offered and are committed to giving incentives with salary increases and promotions for all team who help support us during this very busy time. And I'm delighted to say that we have a hundred percent attendance rate with the promotion or the production team, um, other than three people who are self isolating, which is absolutely fine. And we, we don't want anyone to come in when they don't have to, when they, when they have uh, any symptoms. So I'm really, really happy with the support that we've been giving our teams. And I couldn't be prouder of the way that they've supported the business and continue to work so hard in order to supply all of the products that we make on a daily basis. But also as Alex mentioned, we've also started making hand sanitizer and 3d printing PPE for first responders and those on the front line fighting the, the fight um, for all of us. Um, so this is some stuff. My team and I, we do a lot of research, especially now when we're, um, especially the commercial team are all working from home. And so we're constantly reading up on reports that we can find um, around what's happening in the marketplace, both in the United Kingdom, but also globally and also in the United States, which is a target market for our brand. And so this was a really cool and I thought very well laid out um, a uh, timeline that shows you around the winners and the losers that have come out of so far in the past month in March 2020 versus March 2019, the categories of products which are doing extremely well, and then those categories of products which unfortunately have really lost a lot of their steam and the demand of which has really gone down. As you can see there, there's some stuff that makes a lot of sense, disposable gloves, cough medicine. And then there's some stuff that doesn't make any sense, like bread machines is a little bit weird, I think, in a way. Um, I like the idea that people are buying more weights. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, I like the idea that people are thinking about their health and are um, focusing on their nutrition more. And vitamins, our category is obviously, um, you know, benefiting from that. Um, in addition, I think uh, the dog food one is one that I've noticed. We're trying to get a dog right now, my family and I, and we cannot get a dog for love nor money. And uh, it's because so many people want a dog right now. And it's just such a unique situation. Isn't that weird? I didn't know, <laughs> so, wow, I didn't know that. No. I can't get a dog. I want a dog so much. But anyway, <laughs> so we're going to keep trying. Um, but really, it's a, it's a unique time in history where for the for really the first time in my lifetime for sure the entire population has the same life experience to a much higher percentage than ever before so where when you're in lockdown the possibility of people leading a totally different life from one another is reduced massively and so it's kind of created these really massive trends whereas before and in most of the time when you were in the normal timeline you would see a, a lot of differentiation in trend 
here you see a huge majority of the population doing the same thing, which is where you see these huge spikes and these huge, unfortunately, losses um, for businesses around the travel industry. Um, Alex, you and I were just talking like, who's wearing makeup like right now? Like who's gonna buy makeup? Like you don't have to go outside. Um, high heel shoes I don't think are probably doing very well. Um, going out gear, et cetera. Those kinds of things are gonna suffer, but hopefully they will rebound um, when we return to normal um, as soon as possible and as safely possible. And this is some information that we got around what people are looking for on YouTube. You can find out what people are looking at on Google really easily. So I didn't think that was useful to show, but this is basically YouTube searches and YouTube has experienced a humongous surge in users no matter what. Um, so I thought this was an interesting one to look at. And as you see, baking is going crazy. People are trying to bake everything, which is also the reason why if you go to the grocery store, you can't find flour. It's like, it's like yeah. dust. It's like <laughs> yeah. people are sitting over a bag of flour. It's such an interesting uh, development. Um, but of course, you know, then you have the food delivery, which makes tons of sense, obviously. Mm. Uh, body cleansing, good to see, but I would have yeah. hoped it would have been high before. Um, yeah. and alcohol and health products, um, which also makes sense. And, you know, these kinds of jumps, 124% increase, is something that you would see over a 10-year period normally. So this is a crazy wow. amount to happen in such a short time. And this is why it's so notable and so important to take, take um, awareness of and try and build in strategies around your business to take advantage or at least to leverage the situation as best possible. This is a super cool infographic that I really love. And if you want to find the actual original article that this is in, it's from Visual Capitalist. If you don't already subscribe to their newsletter, I recommend that you do. They're very, very good at condensing quite complex research reports into very easy to um, digest um, infographic style formats. Um, and the research that this is based on is from the Global Web Index. And this basically was a study of, I think it was 40,000 people overall, um, in the current climate and how their media consumption is changing and how that is very different depending on which um, generation you're from. So this is a very pretty picture of it, but if you look on this page on the left-hand side, you can see it all laid out there um, in, in the type of activity and then the type of uh, generation that these people are in and the, the percentage of increase. So some of these are huge, like Gen Z is listening to 71% more music um, and, and so you can imagine what this type of uh, behavioral change at this speed and at this high percentage is going to have when it comes to people's buying behavior, people's interests behavior, and what they believe is important to them at that time. On the right hand side, you can also see that people are desperately seeking out sources that they can trust. And this has been proven to be a massive theme. Um, you know, I think we all are very familiar with the fake news term um, mm. that was coined by our president. But in general, people have constantly been acceptant almost of fake news. It was, I think we can all agree social media was rife with it and people are refusing to put up with it anymore and really, really seeking out um, very, very authentic, precise, scientific, um, authoritative style advice. And they're looking for that from um, all your normal news sources, government organizations, the World Health Organization, podcasts, Alex, yeah. and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and brands and brands that they trust. And this is where your expert blogs come. This is where your news feeds and social media come in. And if you can offer really credible and useful content to your consumer base or your desired consumer base now, you can really create a meaningful relationship with them um, in, a, in a way that you would not have been able to do so uh, anywhere near at the, at the percentage of um, previously, even a couple of months ago. And so this is if you can if you can do it, if you have the ability to create meaningful, credible content that's useful at this time, you have a big opportunity right now to become a trustworthy source, um, which is which is very powerful. Yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. And so these are the key results that we have seen on marketing channels as a response to COVID-19 so far. So PPC, for anybody who's not familiar, it's pay-per-click. So this relates to any type of advertising that you'd see on Google um, or if you'd see something on Instagram that's not part of a community feed, that's considered a pay-per-click ad. And this is by and far 
the way that the majority of online brands advertise their products and find and acquire new customers. And what we're finding is search demands for certain terms are so volatile um, that it's actually disrupting the um, CPCs, so cost per clicks or CACs, cost per acquisitions, that you would never see normally. You'll see normally um, variations of one to two percent. You're seeing 50 percent jumps up and down in search demand and um, cost per clicks. And you're also seeing industry leaders in certain sectors drop out completely from pay-per-click advertising because either A, they're not able to trade, B, their demand is too high, or C, they have huge order delays. And what that means is somebody that's normally spending a huge amount of money on Google and pushing everybody else down the, the list is no longer spending. And so there's opportunities there that did not exist even a week or two ago, and it's changing all the time. The unhappy news is the only way to monitor it is to constantly watch it. Um, but if you have some time on your hands, you can do this by watching Google Analytics. You can set alerts um, and you it's not that hard to watch it, but you do, you do have to watch it because it's changing all the time. In addition, this is just another example of a large industry leader pulling out. Amazon have pulled out of PPC advertising options. And Amazon will be one of the largest, if not the largest, PPC advertisers in the entire world on online. And so for them to pull out the opportunity for other brands to finally get to the top, to finally get a little bit of airtime, to get in front of potential customers is huge and is unique and will not last. So opportunity is there, but it's there for a short period. And then, of course, we have online traffic um, is hugely increased. E-commerce is hugely increasing. Delivery services are booming. And, you know, gaming products, health and fitness products are, are rising sales by 67% year on year on average. And that's growing. So this has really only been in situ for about four to six weeks, depending on where you are. Um, this is going to continue the longer that we are at home and also the longer that we have restrictions in place of any kind on normal day to day life. Um, people are also spending a ton more time on social media. Um, I, I don't normally use social media very much, but I am on there a little bit more than normal and I am noticing it. Um, this is an opportunity, not just from a paid advertising point of view, like PPC, but it's also an opportunity for you to use the social media platform as your pulpit to speak to your community around you and also to give really nice and friendly and authentic and resonant content that people will find useful. Boosting social media community posts, I think, is more valuable at this time than actually spending on PPC advertising um, because I think that people are not looking to be advertised right now. They want information. They want a sense of community. They want a sense of resilience. And on the same note is TikTok, the most downloaded app in the world, which I used to think was nonsense, but now I totally, totally love it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you've been banging at dance videos, have you? It's so fun. It's so funny. I love it. It's so funny. And this is what people want. This is why this app's usage increase has gone up by 350%, already from a massively high base. So that's mm. ridiculous. Um, it's because people are sick of, of bad news yeah. and they're just looking for an escape. And TikTok offers that escape. So brands mm. that are able to use TikTok and create fun videos without damaging their brand integrity, um, or doing anything, you know, I don't know. There's like a gray line, right? Shady, not shady, funny, shady. Yeah. You have to stay on the right side of it. Yeah. Um, but if you're able to do that, then you are really able to of consumers in a very fun and friendly way, which is a great way to meet someone for the first time. Um, and it puts the right kind of tone around your brand that you're fun, that you're doing the best you can, and that you're not constantly sell, 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 which is what people are not putting up with at all right now. Yeah, true. Um, so that's really interesting one. And my team has a competition right now to do TikTok videos, and I'm giving a hundred pounds prize to the best <laughs> TikTok video um, that they upload into our um, company one on a weekly basis. And right now, Victoria is in the lead, but I've got something. I'm going to try something tonight. We'll see. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, out of home is obviously not working right now. Uh, so anybody who 
has ever done advertising out of home, billboards, um, sampling, even magazines sold in transport link hubs like WH Smith, I would consider almost an out of home right now. And of course, the letter to the most famous and most expensive out of home advertising on earth, it's gone down by 94%. So if you're able to cancel your commitments there, if you have any and direct that spend in other ways, then that would be the, the advice. And I think a lot of people are being really reasonable about it. So I think um, that's that's obviously normal. I think when we come back out of COVID uh, lockdown, the, the opportunity will be in out of home because a lot of the major advertisers for out of home were places like Virgin, um, you know, travel. They were yeah. travel focused. If travel, especially international travel, remains restricted in some way for a period of time, then out of home may be extremely good value and will still reach quite a few people when we finally, you know, when they let us back out again when it's safe. Mm. So that's my advice around that. Um, organic search um, is around how to. This is up a massive amount depending on what you're searching for. Um, how to cut men's hair is up 650%. Flapjack recipes are up 160% and it goes on. And so one of the things my team and I have been doing is writing how-to blogs and right. just really tidbitty blogs. And it's working really well. And some of them are quite funny, you know, like how not to kill your partner in lockdown. No, honestly, that's not one of them. But like, imagine, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> focus, you know, how to um, ensure that your kids don't fall behind. And I think this is a big thing. People are having their kids at home for a really long time. Mm. And I think that finding ways of also creating excitement for children's education is another amazing opportunity if you can do so authentically um, with really good content. I think that's a that's a great opportunity. Yeah. Um, audio is 34% more more listening to radio, and this mm. is variant around the different stations. Uh, LBC has seen uh, something like 200 and something percent increase in listening. Um, but overall, across all stations, if you take the average, it's 34, which makes radio an incredibly powerful format right now, mm. um, which is good. And then um, TV, quite obvious, it's increasing. But the interesting thing is it's increasing mostly between the 16 and 34s, and it's increasing in the day. Um, so I don't know exactly what we can learn from that other than perhaps um, some of these people might still be in school and they're not at school and or um, unfortunately maybe some of these people were in that age bracket where you might find a lot of them working in some of the industries which were worst affected by COVID um, meaning that they're they're not able to go to work. Um, yeah you're probably right like hospitality yeah and those who have got GCSEs and A-levels they'd be yeah. all in that band wouldn't they yeah. Absolutely absolutely so I know for a fact that buying advertising on TV right now is extremely cheap um, however, there is other challenges, like how do you create um, a TV worthy advert when you can't access, when you can't film anything? Yeah. You have to be creative. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to be creative. So um, this is some examples of what we've done to acclimatize our business to COVID. So, you know, we've moved our budget out of our out of home promotions. We had committed a pretty decent level of spend to doing out of home promotions, um, sampling outside of the tube stations with Balance Magazine, out of home advertising with Clear Channel. All of that has been put on hold and we've redirected that spend into supporting our production um, and also into doing influencer campaigns and making free hand sanitizer for, for all of our customers, which has proven to be a very good decision. The response that we're getting from consumers is really positive and it's you know, it's not salesy approach in any way. It's more like support and community based, which is definitely, we would do this anyway. We would, we actually do this all year round, but it's actually getting a lot more, I guess, sharing and conversation, which is really positive for our brand identity and for our social proof around who we are as a company. Um, support your customer base and your community as much as you can. You know, I, not everybody has an R&D lab and a 3D printer farm like we do, but there's something that everyone can do in order to support in some way their customer base and their community, whether it be with information, whether it be with um, you know offering to help the vulnerable, whether it be with donations. Um, I read an article this morning about a wonderful program where people are actually just writing letters to the most vulnerable people who are having to self-isolate and don't have family. 
because they're so lonely and they're so isolated. This is an incredibly valuable service and all it takes is time that you sit down and write a letter. Mm -hmm. I think we can all do something that will make a meaningful impact. And I think it's our responsibility to try and find a way each to do that. Um, and so that's something that we find is really, it's also making my team extremely proud to be part of our business, which is further, you know, helping us all keep our energy up and keep our momentum up um, to, you know, continue to work as hard as we're having to do so, um, which is, which is really great. I think, yeah, that's a, that's one of those beautiful cyclical things. Um, the harder you work, the more you get back, the harder you work, the more you get back and so on. And there's some examples of the responses we're getting from customers, and there's so many of these. We made an entire mosaic tiling thing out of them um, for my shareholder update, but this is just an example. Um, people are really happy and they're really grateful, and it just makes it feel good, and it makes my customers feel good, it makes my team feel good, and it just creates this wonderful relationship um, with our customer base um, that will last long, long after the COVID crisis is over. And then this is some important stuff that we've been working on. So brand messaging is extremely important right now, more important than it's ever been before. If you step out of line with your brand messaging right now, people will eat you alive. Hmm. Um, and because they are, because A, people are all frightened. I'm frightened at times. I think we're all a little bit frightened. It's quite a scary situation. Hmm. And when people are frightened as human beings, our natural response is to react um, in a way that we might not normally react, in a way that's a bit like a Rottweiler, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you step out of line with your brand messaging and are seen to do anything that is not supportive and helpful, et cetera, you really risk not only damaging your sales this month, but damaging your brand identity for the long term. Yeah. The pandemic has impacted millions of people. You've got to be sensitive and never, ever exploit it. And that's really, really important. Um, when it comes to PR, it's my recommendation that you don't do too much PR right now, other than about the way that you're supporting your community and your your employees and your staff, because no one cares how great your products are right now or how many awards you won or mm -hmm. how many product launches you have. The only thing people are concerned with right now is can that idea, advice, blog, information, product help me right now during this crisis? And if it can't, then PR is not the best approach to spend time and money right now. Mm -hmm. um, support and inform. This is our. This is what I was saying throughout the conversation. We're doing blogs. We're doing three a week. We're doing live videos every Friday where I answer questions from anyone in on the internet about any questions they have around. Um, 3D printing, around nutrition, about supplements, immunity, et cetera. I'm a, I'm a registered nutritionalist, so I'm qualified to answer these questions. And we do this for a half an hour every Friday, and it's really well received. We had some, the reach last week was over 45,000, and we only boosted um, the, the live video with, I think it was less than 50 pounds. This is really, really good. And it just shows that people are interested in that and are finding it meaningful and finding it beneficial. And then, you know, make sure that you uh, keep your FAQ section robust and use banners and um, messaging either via email or in other ways to make sure your customers know that you have COVID protocol at top of mind, especially if you're making things like food products. You need to continually reassure them that we're still delivering, everything is okay. This is what we've done to protect you and our staff. And you need to, more than ever, you have to overly communicate in my opinion. Um, and it seems a little silly at times, but people really find it reassuring. And it's important that people feel reassured right now. Um, and these are some examples of brands getting it right. So this is audible.com who are giving free stories um, and free accounts to people to listen to stories throughout this period, which is a beautiful way of supporting people. Mm. Um, Headspace um, is basically offering meditations for free to anyone, which again is fantastic supporting um, mental health. Now, the first two, Audible and Headspace, are giving away a software in effect, which is not going to cost them anything. So although I think it's very good, I also think it didn't cost them anything to do it. Yeah. BrewDog, on the other hand, turned their brewery into a hand sanitizer factory and made punk sanitizer and mm. gave it away for free. And that is awesome. And that was at their own cost. And I, and I hats off to them. That's extremely well done and extremely well um, pivoted. And I think that, they, that will, I mean, they're already extremely well liked, everybody loves them, but I think that that will just continue to solidify that. 
Mm. Uh, and then of course Nike. Nike doesn't really put a foot wrong when it comes to their tags and the way that they communicate. And this is no different. Um, you know, I think there's a really cool application thing that you can do now and you can play with virtual reality with all these amazing stars and they have these different ones every single day. Mm. These are the people not doing it so good. <laughs> So we, you know, I think it's important. You can't just look at all this best practice. You also have to see where is it going wrong and how, what can you learn from that in order to make sure that your brand um, takes on those lessons and doesn't put the feet in the same direction. So the main messages are very clear and they're quite common sense. Do not profit on fear. Do not make light of the crisis and do not be seen to being unsupportive. And some examples of companies that haven't done that, sadly, are Coca-Cola, who tried to make light of the situation by uh, basically pulling their logo letters apart, like social distancing. Mm. Oh, dear. Um, and <laughs> yeah, woo. I'm not sure who let that out. Uh, somebody obviously had a discussion. But um, and then over here, Ritual is a is a vitamin product, which we monitor anyway, because in the Mer they're not in the UK, but they're in America. And we would consider them a competitor of ours when we go to the US. They've been sending um, messages out to people, pushing them to buy vitamins and talking about, you can't leave the house, why not buy vitamins? It's not very it's not very good. And I'm really sad for them because other than that, if I'm being honest, they're extreme, they usually do things very, very well. So I'm not sure exactly what happened, but they got, they had to write a, a formal letter of apology in the time. Oh no, did they? Oh. Yes, they oh. did, which is a shame. So that's, um, I hope, helpful for you guys. It's not a long time to go through everything in massive detail. These are um, all of the ways that you can get in contact with us. And if you'd like to try a one-week supply of our products, you go to getnourished.com and click the contact button, um, use the subject webinar, and put your name and address in, and we will uh, get those out to you next week. And I think if I can just get out of here, then I can answer any questions if there's time. Yeah, I'll bring up. Um, I will bring up the screen. Um, so there, everybody, there you can go. Hear you. I'm gonna untoggle myself as well. I switch. Always switch mine off because of the bandwidth these days. Sometimes uh, can't yeah. cope with two videos. Um, brilliant. That was uh, lots of comments there saying how interesting that was. Um, that you and your team. Put that together um and what are we now is it week five week six i've forgotten how many weeks we're in lockdown but it's at least a month stats there isn't there yeah i think um those stats started at the beginning of march um okay i think that really if you look at europe they started in the beginning of march i think we yeah. started in a lockdown i feel like it was like the middle of march but maybe I think you're right i think it was the middle of march yeah, you're about, yeah five weeks coming up to six weeks next week i think yeah um cool um so first question we've got so i get questions via this separate tab as well which bizarrely the speaker can't see which is the person they're meant for but anyway so um question is what happened to you and your business immediately after lockdown um the question is are you trading but clearly you are trading but yeah what did you do immediately any like immediate actions melissa yeah, so we um, we had received word uh, about three weeks prior to lockdown that the situation in China was very bad and that it had now spread to Germany um, and so that we should prepare immediately. And so we started our COVID protocols three weeks before lockdown started. And we were way ahead, I think, of a lot of businesses in the planning around that because um, we had received such such strong advice from uh, some of our investors who are based in China and Germany. And so when the lockdown happened, we had already received our key business approval. Everyone had all of their paperwork that they needed to travel to and from work. And so the only thing that really changed was that we had, uh, we had to basically ensure that anyone with any pre-existing health condition um, was able to go home and we're, we came up with different admin tasks that they would be able to do. I haven't furloughed any of my staff um, at all um, and everyone um, at home and not at home has been kept on full salary uh, throughout the throughout this time. And so, yeah, that, I mean, we did crazy stuff. Like we, we pre-ordered ingredients four months ahead 
So we bought, we were, we were forward buying vitamin C and, you know, loads of things that we thought we would not be able to access. Um, we forward bought N95 masks. Um, we forward bought uh, pure alcohol to be able to make hand sanitizer. Um, but that's really helped us because it's allowed us to not only look after our team, but it's also allowed us to make a huge amount of, of product that we've been able to donate. Yeah, sounds like you were, you were ahead of the curve there compared to a lot of businesses more in, you were proactive or a lot of other people have just been reactive. Um, uh, where's this one? Uh, let's have a quick look at this question. So um, Gordon says, if I have a brand that is in lockdown, e.g. construction, would you advise it's best to say nothing or is there anything else I could be doing? Yeah, construction is a hard one. Um, I do think construction will be one of the things that they let back sooner rather than later. Yeah. So that's one tiny piece of um, good news. Um, if you're B2B, um, I think communicating with your client set, your existing clients and your clients in pipeline, um, not massive, not loads and loads because people are being bombarded with um, communication. But I think, you know, once every two weeks or so to let them know how you're doing, what's happening in your business, what you're doing to prepare for the next stages, um, then I think that I think it is worth communicating. I think for social media, for construction and things, I haven't seen any construction companies doing anything really, really well. What I have seen is... Um, I have seen people doing Zoom clapping, you know, like to show their company's support for key workers, which I think is never a bad thing to do to show your support for key workers and to show your business is still, you know, there and you guys are still, you know, working to try and come out of the crisis. Um, but yeah, I think there's not so much more that you can do at this stage, um, but I am hopeful and it all signs point to the construction industry being one of the first ones they let back. Um, so fingers crossed for that. Yes, Sam adds here, yeah, Gordon, can't you help your customers um, be ready for when the industry finally opens, like, like you say, and can you prepare your business for that day as well? So yeah, I, I agree. I'm, so I mean, it's funny, isn't it? I've, I've never been again, likewise, so bombarded with communication, like cold emails mm. from people I've never heard of in my life. I have no idea where they're getting my information, but I do think it's important to, to keep in touch with your, your customers um, and just ask you if there's anything you, you can do to help in the meantime, really just keeping them, keeping you and your business warm for when they do um, let us all out. Um, Absolutely. Helen says, well done, Melissa. You're a great example of how you're looking after your staff. They're your biggest ambassadors and you can't buy support like that. Absolutely. And again, there's so many examples of people who've got this clearly wrong, um, thinking about the sports industry in particular, and then having to make massive apologies. Mm. Um, like I think, was it Liverpool and, and Tottenham Hotspur as well, both furloughed staff and then gone back with the fact that they've got multi-billionaire owners and... Uh, <laughs> Etc. Um, Tess says, um, Melissa, what changes do you expect uh, in the way markets work after the lockdown is lifted? What changes? Do you expect um, work? Yeah, I think um, that's a broad question, but I think yeah. I think what we'll find is that lockdown will be lifted and it will not change anywhere near overnight. So yeah. I think that what you'll see is, first of all, it will happen in stages. So that's, I think that's quite clear. I think the government has said that's also going to be the case. And that's what it's happened in other markets, with, which came before us. So I think that's clear. What I think we will find is that there will not be a normal anymore. There's, we're never going back to where we were. That will never happen again. Um, the lasting memory of this situation and what it has meant to people. And I mean, God forbid the people who have all, who have lost family members more so than anyone, but we've all been affected by it uh, mm. quite Quite, quite a huge amount. And so I think what you'll see is social distancing will be for a very long time. I don't think that we will find people in close proximity, you know, like going to a rock concert and being super yeah. close together. I don't think that that will happen for a really long time, if maybe never, I don't know. I also think things like hospitality, um, food, restaurants, bars, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to come back um, because it won't be that they can't open. It will be that there won't be enough people that will be willing to go in. And if yeah. there is, you know, the restaurant industry is set up around the idea that they have to pack them in to be able to make enough money to pay their rent. 
Mm -hmm. You can't pack people in anymore. It's actually not safe. So how does that model change? Um, and I also think that people, I hope that what happens is people will find that they, that they learn more around what they, they took for granted. I know that I have. I, I think about almost every day my hug list and who I'm going to hug first when I'm allowed to hug people again. Um, <laughs> you know, I have friends that I miss so dearly, that I miss so dearly their face. I, 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 we do the face party, but it's yeah. not the same. And I and I haven't missed I haven't missed buying clothes I haven't missed going out to the bar I haven't missed a lot of things like that. I, 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 I cannot wait to see them um, and I think I hope that it helps people realign what's really important to them and and I think that will be the one positive that might come out of what, what is a really horrible situation. Yeah, I, I think you're right, isn't it? You, you, the things you do take for granted. Um, and I, I've loved the fact, you know, reconnecting, there's been a lot lot of reconnecting, a lot of nostalgia as well um, that you see. And I, I agree with you. I think uh, it'd be really interesting to see what happens with like concerts and big sporting events. Um, can it ever, you know, go back to, to what it was in a huge billion dollar industries, all of them, and, and likewise, hospitality industry. Um, when you When you look at before before it was locked down in, in certain countries people like being on separate tables and you think well they can't even get anywhere close to breaking even like that um yeah. and and airlines as well i mean you do a lot of international uh, air travel i'm sure you're not missing uh, a huge part of that some of it obviously for for friends and family but mm -hmm. the business side of things and you, you see like easy jet blocking out like the middle seats and you just think well again they can't fly unless they've got a pretty full first class yeah, and I think what will happen is the prices will go up and it will make travel yeah. um, not affordable for, for a lot of people. So travel will become less uh, um, accessible, which is not a good thing. We, yeah. we were at a point before where we had extremely affordable travel options mm -hmm. and I thought that was a good thing. And now I think that that will go away because the airlines simply can't afford the fuel. No. Or the, you know, to get the plane without that many people in there. Yeah. Um, they have it down to an exact science. I guarantee you they have it down to a minuscule level science. And um, I, this way of doing it will, will result in higher costs for us. Um, and I think, you know, in the very, very long term, of course, it will hopefully get back to a level. But I just don't think that we'll ever go back to where we were before. I, I really don't. I heard the, the private jet business is uh, doing very, very well at the moment. <laughs> and that's only going to continue, isn't it? That's only going to go one way. More and more of those people uh, who could afford to do that or, or buy a share of that kind of operations are going to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, a bunch of questions while I've been um, wittering away myself here. So, uh, Richard, this crisis has cemented the link between cleaning and health. How would you suggest cleaning businesses leverage this to homeowners and commercial contacts? That's a good question. That is an excellent question, and I totally agree with Richard. Um, I think there's a couple of different ways. Um, getting some really punchy statistics around cleaning and the, um, the, the reduction in risk when things are cleaned. Um, and also how quickly things can spread when they're not cleaned, et cetera, is, is a nice way of kind of drilling at home. And in effect, without saying, come use my services, you're, you're, you're showing statistics that show that your services are required, basically. Um, at our offices, we have, um, we have multiple cleaning teams that come in and do different types of cleaning because we have a food factory. But I've had multiple cards through the door of the business um, saying we have um, antiviral cleaner. If you need COVID-19 cleaning, we can come in. Um, and if I hadn't already had two really wonderful teams that I've been working with for a while, I would have called them. Um, so I think that's just making people aware of what your services are, that you have cleaning supplies um, and can offer solutions to try and help people um, be more safe in their homes. I think that's key. If you're only cleaning people's homes, the tricky bit is, can you clean a whole house in the one hour they go out for exercise? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are. But with businesses, it's a really good idea. And I think as you come up to the end of lockdown where more businesses, especially offices, will go back to work, 
I think it's a great opportunity for you to reach out to people and say, do you want to have a pre-return from lockdown clean? Nice. Yeah. Because there's actually some evidence that they they tested on that cruise ship where the COVID virus lived on surfaces for over a month. Wow. And so there might be and personally I would just research that a little bit and and offer people to do a pre-return from lockdown clean because I think I would if I didn't already have cleaners, I would take you up on that in a heartbeat. Yes, yeah, great idea. Um, another good question, Susie Harris. The government talk of a bounce to the economy recovery. Uh, do you agree, Melissa, or will the shape of social behaviour returning to a new normal be similar in the shape of the economy and spending? Um, they're talking about the bounce. I know why they say that there's going to be a bounce. Um, I A lot will depend on what happens with government support packages. And that's not normally how I would... Uh, judge the economy in the long term for sure. Yeah. The furlough scheme is a lifeline right now. If for any reason it goes away before people are ready to hire people back in, um, you're talking about like two and a half million people that have been furloughed. This is a lot of people. Two and a half million times 2,500 a month. That's how much money will go out of the economy if the furlough scheme comes out before businesses are ready to bring those staff back on. That could cause a humongous problem for everyone. Our economy is all linked. Um, but in general, I think, I hope that there will be growth and it will be more of a traditional growth line. Um, it will just be, the growth will be coming from different places than it was before. Yeah. And, and like kind of alluded to earlier as well, and, you know, hopefully there's not, but you see stories of like, you know, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Australia just went into administration yeah, and, and there, there's going to be redundancies, aren't there? Whichever way you look at it on top of the furloughing. So, yeah. Uh, and there already are, there already are, like there's already so many people out of work. And then yeah. that's in addition, those people who have been furloughed, which is a temporary lifeline. But if for yeah. any reason the timing doesn't click together, right? It could be a humongous yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't see who posted this one up, but uh, many businesses have seen their income fall to zero almost overnight. Um, yeah, I've spoken to some businesses like that. Some large businesses seem to have reacted by looking to stop paying rent and rates, etc. Is it reasonable for smaller businesses to consider, consider emulating them? Um, so two things. One, you shouldn't be paying rates in, at all if you're a small business and you get SBBR. Yeah. You should also be getting a, a £10,000 check. No, I haven't had mine yet. If anybody's had theirs, please let me know in the comments. Um, but <laughs> but so, <laughs> don't pay, so don't pay rates. Definitely not. Don't, no, 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 no. Um, and when it comes to paying your rent, I think the first reasonable step is to speak to your landlord. Because I bet your landlord would rather you pay a smaller amount. Oh, you did, Swan. Susie goes. Super yeah. organized, man. I mean, honestly, right. well, I, for you there. Well, a lot bigger. Maybe that's why. But I just honestly, I, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not sure if we'll ever get it. But it's okay. At the end of the day, uh -huh. it's fine. but I think I would speak to your landlord first. Um, I know our. We have two buildings here. We have a pretty decent size operation. Um. And we spoke, they spoke to me first. They actually reached out and said, are you gonna be okay? Um, if you need, we can work out a plan where there's a 50% reduction, et cetera, because it just makes it more friendly for when you come back, hopefully not too long from now. If you have a choice between paying your staff and paying your rent, pay your staff. I'm sorry, but that's not even hard yeah. for me to answer. Yeah. Pay your staff. And if you have a choice between paying your staff and paying your taxes, pay your staff. In my opinion, <laughs> that's a choice for every business owner. But I would rather have an argument with HMRC than let any of my hardworking team ever go without for something that is not in any way their fault or anything to do with them. And so that's a decision you have to make as an owner. I personally know that the HMRC are allowing PAYE holidays right now for anybody who contacts them. You fill in an online form for three months. You don't pay your PAYE. And if you... Um, are not already not paying rates, you should you should contact your council and not pay them. And then if there is um if your land is this is this from the same person the landlord isn't in isn't in yeah. reductions. Ooh, they're harsh. Um 
How big of a landlord is it? Do they have a lot of property or is yours really their only one? That is harsh, isn't it? Yeah. It seems harsh. What I know is that the larger landlords who have multiple properties seem to be being reasonable because I think they're trying to leverage without everybody just going, not paying rent. They're trying yeah. to be reasonable to get a little bit of something, which is the smart play. Um, several rented properties. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I personally don't think that they would be able to get you out of the property if you didn't pay your rent right now. Mm. I think that they would really struggle to take you to court at this time for that kind of a thing. Mm. But I'm not a legal expert on, on, and I've never seen your contract and I couldn't possibly fully advise. I would recommend you speak to a lawyer. And if you have a membership in the FSB, you can access lawyers for free 24 hours a day and they you can send them your agreement and they will give you advice on it really quickly. It's really, really good. Yeah, they should. It depends, Jazz, on how big the nursery is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, a couple of other questions come through the other channel. Um, what is your priority, Melissa, for you and Nourish for the next four weeks? Um, the next four weeks. So yeah, the next four weeks, we're just working double time to make as much PPE as we can and continually continue to, to handle um, and deliver all of our customer orders on time. Um, we're finding that people are getting quite concerned about delivery times right now. So we're, we want to exceed expectations, make sure we get everything to everybody on time. Um, and yeah, because we have the ability to 3D print this PPE and because people are crying out for it, um, it's our moral responsibility to make as much of it as we can. And that's why I've diverted about four of our team that are doing nothing but that every day now. Amazing. Yes, yeah, so I've seen your posts on social about that. I think it's brilliant. Quick to pivot again. Um, don't expect anything less. Um, <laughs> thank you, Christina. Thank you, Jane. Uh, I think we answered that one earlier about um, B2B instead of B2C um, messaging during the crisis. I think we covered that one. Um, here's one for you. This came in earlier. If you had a million pounds to invest in an industry today, going on the stats that you've just shown us, which one would you put your money on? Uh, mobile conferencing, video conferencing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll double down on that. Honestly, if you could revolutionize video conferencing and make it a little bit easier to use, I think you would have something. But no, let me think, let me answer with something a little bit more unique. Um, I personally think, Hmm, what's the a million pound of investment in industry based on all of this? Uh, that's tricky. I mean, I obviously would invest my money in, in delivery money. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that there's going to be some really big winners right now, and they're going to come out of ways that people stay connected, and it's going to be in a variety of different ways. They're going to be different gaming apps, so you can do quizzes with friends. It's going to be different video apps. I guarantee you someone's going to bring out an app so that we can watch live sports again somehow and yeah. feel like we're with other people. There's going to be live apps for live music that are going to be really, really well done because we need these options desperately. And if people can develop them, there's a world of people that want them. So that's really exciting because that's all tech and that can be done you know, remotely and with teams that are all working from different places, which is what's possible right now, so. Yeah, I was um, ch speaking about the video conference. I was like chatting to Magnus from Antler, who were the same clarity, you guys. And he was saying, you know, in, in this age, uh, you know, virtual reality and everything. It's amazing that nobody has invented a decent video conferencing where you actually feel like you're in the yeah. room with somebody. Like when you saw the concert the other night as well, you know, with the Rolling Stones and Lady Gaga and everybody, you're like, it just doesn't feel interactive, does it yet? Yeah. And VR is really good. I mean, we have a VR for the kids and they, it's awesome. I was so overwhelmed yeah. by how good it is. Yeah. So someone needs to turn that on its head and position it in different ways. And I think that would be a ridiculously good business. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, that's it, I think. And uh, anyone got a last question? Otherwise, we've gone we've gone over our time. So thank you, Melissa. I know you could be doing a million other things with your time, but we greatly appreciate this. Um, so remind us again, if people want to get a week's trial, if they go to... Yep, so go to get-nourished.com or just type nourished into any search bar. You'll, it'll come up. Um, and then when you get onto the website, go to the contact us page. 
type webinar in the subject, say you just listen to me on the webinar and put your name and address and we'll get those out to you next week. And they are not only nutritious and good, but they taste delicious because I had a month <laughs> in January myself. They're delicious, absolutely delicious and work. So loads of thanks flying in, Tom, Christina, Helen, Susie, Jane. Thank you all very much for watching. Um, back again tomorrow, 10 a.m., uh, three live webinars. We've got Matt Haycox, who is on, I think, what's that program called? Rich House, Poor House on Sunday night on Channel 4, just gone, uh, which was entertaining viewing. So, yeah, three tomorrow. I've got Huel um, as well, James McMaster, CEO of Huel, H-U-E-L. Um, you're probably aware of Melissa as well, Huel. Yeah, um, really nice guy, really nice guy. Izzy, I haven't met him. I know Julian. I haven't met uh, James, but I think that'll be a really good one as well. So, um, yeah, bunch of interesting webinars coming up. So, Melissa, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Um, thanks, Bye. everybody, for turning up. Appreciate it. Take care. Have a great day. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.